Hey guys, um, so I had so many plans and I was going to try out so many different art supplies and then what I wanted to do uh, just hasn't turned out. So I purchased something else instead. I was looking at the school supplies in Target the other day and I found this and I almost talked myself out of it and I probably should have talked myself out of it, but why not? Let's uh, try painting with cheap watercolors. Yeah. And so this is by the brand Mondo Llama. Target um, has acquired this brand apparently because they're everywhere, but it comes in a cute little wooden box. I don't even know how to open this. I guess I'm just going to have to tear it open. I don't know what to expect, but it comes with a lot of different colors in it. And look how fancy it wants to be. Ooh. Ah. Oh my goodness. That's actually really cute. So if these end up being absolute garbage, which they probably are, this would not be a little you know, it's a bad little set to have on its own to take these out and then to use it. Ooh, and they do come out too. You could use this for a different set of watercolors. And if you were really decorative, you could paint on the box here. But it comes with little paint brushes, comes with a little mixing well. We're going to swatch these um, and I'll be right back. I'm trying to film for both YouTube and TikTok and it is a lot of work to be honest with you. Um, we're going to use the brand new sketchbook that I got um, because I ran out of swatching space in my other notebook. So we're going to try out this new paper which I wanted to use for another art project anyway. I'm holding it down with another watercolor pan. I don't know if I necessarily like the brushes that it came with. Let's see, we'll try the little bitty one. I'm just going to swatch these out real quick. <laughs> it comes with it comes with white. This really intrigues me, so I guess we'll start with the white first. I again have really low hopes, but we'll see. I mean, at least you can see the white. I don't think it's going to dry opaque, and I do like my opaque watercolors. Oh no. This is kind of bad because I already drew something that I want to paint after this. But I drew it on tan paper because everything that I do is on tan paper these days. And now I don't think that the... Oh no, I just threw my... Ignore that. I'm very clumsy. But I don't think the uh, watercolors are going to show up on the tan paper. I don't know. Alright, we're going to zoom forward and then I'll show you what all these swatches look like when I am done. Surprisingly, these are drying a lot more opaque than I thought they were going to because when I was laying them down, they were very, very transparent. But actually, this pink right here is really pretty. I kind of like that. Um, what I don't like well i mean obviously this is for this has got to be for children this is under the school supply set there's no pigment information anywhere on here i highly doubt that these are light fast which is fine that's not what anybody should be buying it for anyway um i don't like these little white tipped paint brushes because they're already stained it looks dirty i can't ever tell if i get it clean and um this brush is awful you probably can't see that but it's already Praying. I'm going to have to take some scissors to that. But yeah, I'm going to wait for this to completely dry. And then what we're going to do, I drew something already that I want to color. Let me see if I can move some of this out of the way. However, what I drew, we're not going to be able to use all of those colors. It's too many. Um, but we're going to paint a happy little cow and dog and that'll be our
project for the day. A big old like scratch in my paper or something. I don't know what that is. But yeah, so we're going to get started on painting this. Let me just make sure I've got my swatches out of the way so I don't accidentally drop that in the floor. I'm going to use my regular uh, paintbrush. The, um, I prefer the velvet touch um, because I know I'm going to have better results with this than the one that it came with, although the idea was cute. So I'm just hoping this is going to be a fast little project. Um, let's get started with our puppy dog first. I usually do my border collies in purple, but there's not actually like a dark purple in the set. So we're going to use this navy bluish color. We're going to let the puppy dog dry a little bit and I'm going to move on to the cow. So we're just going to go straight for the black for this one. One of the good things about watercolor is that um, it kind of can make its own shadows and highlights depending on how you lay it down. Um, so if you just put down your first layer where you know you want like shadows or highlights to be, and then you can go back over it again later to darken the uh, shadows or leave the highlights alone and it'll just kind of create shapes for you. It takes away a lot of the stress, I think, of making those sort of details. I don't use black very often in artwork, but when I saw this watercolor set, I thought for sure I was like, let's do Dairy Cow. I felt like, I don't know, I just felt like for some reason that would be easier. I've got her with kind of like a floral necklace on. When I'm finished, I may need to make that pop back out with a colored pencil or a Posca pen or something. Try not to color over my flowers. Let's just go ahead and do that pink udder. I don't know, maybe I am using more colors than what I thought I was going to use. I think because this pink is awfully cartoony pink. Let's throw in a little bit of like some tan in there too, just to tone it down a little bit. Looking at my swatch sheet, some of the colors are a little bit deceiving. What is that one? So like, I'm looking, hmm. Just a little bit of some tanny orange in there just to add a little bit extra. I don't know what color rumps are. Do I make that pink the whole way up? This is one you should look at. Maybe that just looks bad. And we'll let it dry, we'll figure it out later. Probably need to color that back white. All right. My goodness, let's do her face. I'm a little bit afraid of the color black. 
because I don't want to lose like shape and details. You can't really come back after black. This isn't super like jet black, so it should be fine, but I'm going to do, I like how it dries, like almost like a blue black. But when I'm laying it on, it looks like a brown black. I'm just um, coloring in areas where I want there to be shadows first, and then we'll let that dry. Do I want to add another like purple to the dog? Maybe another blue? Okay, I'm actually adding a little bit of purple to the dog. And I'm thinking just to make everything match, what if we add a little bit of purple to like his spots too? That way everything's kind of in the same like color scheme. And then this is getting really moist, so we're going to have to let this dry a little bit. This watercolor takes an eternity to dry, so I thought I wanted to do like purple shadows, but then I didn't. I went for brown. Brown everywhere. Give it a vintage -y type of look. And then I made a muddy mess, which is fine. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to try the white. Let's do the white and see if we can do like the white of the cow. You hear my appliances in the background running. The girl's got to do chores while this is drying. Okay. Some of this is still really, really wet, so I'm somewhat afraid. I'm just going to smear it everywhere. Alright, again, this is not supposed to be like beautiful. This is just for fun. So, but I think I have just about used every single color in this palette. I didn't think I was going to. I thought I was going to have like a very limited range. And no, I've used just about everything except for like the yellows. And um, I did use a little bit of green. I don't know if that's enough to really make note of. But let's see here if we can't get this cow to look a little bit more vibrant with white on it. Um, what I'm going to do is cheat. A little bit I mean it's not bad I'm not I'm not mad I just need it to look a little bit smoother so I'm gonna pull out my normal watercolor palette and just do a little bit of some touch-ups and we'll go from there So here I'm getting ready to outline this in my ink pens like I always do. This is one of the last steps I always do in my process. But when I pulled out my professional paint set, the only thing that I did was I used a little bit of a neutral color. That's what it's called. It's like neutral tint in I think it's Holbein uh, or maybe it was my shin hand set. I don't know. But it was it's just a neutral tint. And what I was having was I was having some issue with the black watercolor paint in particular on his tail. It was like no matter what I did, I could not get a dark enough black. And the more I went over it, the more I was pulling up the paint that I had already laid down. And it wasn't giving me the look that I needed. So I used a little bit of the neutral tint, which is a dark color in itself, and it just kind of helped uh, flatten out and smooth out that color so it didn't look so grainy. 
And so here I'm getting into the colored pencil stage. This is where I just start applying my outlines. Um, what I am impressed with with this set as well is the white paint. It works about as good as the Block X brand white paint, which still isn't, you know, as great as the white gouache does, but it worked fairly well. Um, I'm going to go around and outline just spots of the watercolor to make um, the watercolor pop out a little bit more. It kind of adds to the fact of shadowing or highlighting that the watercolor made itself. Um, I didn't do those, but the, uh, the colored pencil makes it look more like definitive, makes it show up a little bit more. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I'm actually really impressed with the skin tone color in this set. That, that pink I thought was going to turn out cartoony, and it's not. It's actually like tan, so that's kind of a nice surprise. So we're coming just about to the end. I'm going to outline this in um, Posca white, just so when I scan this into the computer later, um, it's easier for me to cut the background out. But um, surprisingly, these watercolors were not the worst things ever. Um, when I did the dollar store gouache paints, that was kind of a frustrating experience. And I thought that's what this was going to be as well. Um, but it actually kind of wasn't. They were not horrible. I mean, they still don't surpass you know, my professional paints that I use in my professional palette. And I did, you know, cheat again, or um, I got into my professional palette to help me out just to make this uh, look a little bit nicer. But I mean, overall, if you were, I don't know, maybe if you were a floral artist, um, not necessarily for the type of art that I do, but I don't think that those would be terrible watercolors to do for just like a general hobbyist, maybe like a journalist and you're just trying to fill in space. Um, the weird thing that they did do, which made it hard, was it was kind of almost like the pigment would separate. Um, so you would lay the watercolor down and then when it dried, all the pigment kind of pooled into one area and then it would dry and then the surrounding would be kind of like granulated, which is not an effect that I particularly enjoy. Um, they also don't really play very nicely with other watercolors. So I did use, like I said, my professional watercolors, but the two didn't really mix that good. I could see a, um, almost like a film or like a shiny glare. You might be able to see it on the camera at times with the light hitting it, but it was kind of like you could see the the edges of where the cheap watercolor was when I mixed it with my professional watercolor. But I mean, overall, I, I came up with a much easier design result than I did when I, again, did my cheap dollar store gouache challenge. So and this was fairly fast and quick and, and fun. Um, the palette, again, was very cute. Um, I really like this wooden box. Um, the little plastic palette, I mean, this falls out. I thought this was porcelain at first. Of course, it's not going to do it now, but, but it does fall out of there. I didn't use the mixing end, but I mean, it's a cute little box. If you are just wanting to get that for like your kid again for school or something, then it's totally fine. Um, but that's just about it. It's a pleasurable experience. I had fun. I'm pretty happy with my results. I'm just going to finish outlining this and then I will post this again to my Instagram. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye.